Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Real quick, before I get into this video, I want to tell you about PopCultureZone.com. They are a website specializing in comic books, some of the hottest variants, and CGC comics. You can get raw comics. They specialize in lots of 10. And for those raw comics, if you are shipping to the domestic United States, you only pay $4.99 flat rate shipping. They also specialize in CGC pre-orders. And another great thing, they have no sales tax unless you live in New Jersey. Sorry guys, forget about it. But no sales tax, lots of 10, CGC Comics, popculturezone.com. Now on to the video. And the first one we'll talk about is exclusive variants. One thing we've seen about exclusive variants, you see them all the time. We've produced some ourselves at Simple Man's Comics with the 616 Comics. Had a website at one time, exclusivevariants.com. But what we want to talk about is print runs within exclusive variants. The good, the bad, what are people's thoughts? Whether we have some people saying, hey, we're not doing, we're not going to give the print runs. We have some people saying, hey, this is just limited to a thousand copies when we no, if you do anything with exclusive variants, that is not true. It's it's the minimal order for some of those is much larger than a thousand. And then we want to get people's thoughts. We want to get your thoughts. We want to get people in the chat's thoughts. And we're going to kick this off right now. I'm going to start with Andy Tomberlin. Tell Andy, what are your thoughts on exclusive variants, print runs, good, bad? Where do you sit on all of this? I, I think it depends on what you're doing it for. Um, I think from the collector side, it, who gives a shit? You know, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think if you're looking at it from a spec side, that puts a little different twist on it because there are speculators out there that aren't going to buy it if it's more than a thousand print run. Um, you know, and that's just being honest. Uh, I you think I, the I price could, ties into it too, though? Like what's I mean, if the the cost of the book, if you don't know what the print run is, to you know, reach into your wallet. Or, hey, I don't mind it being a little bit more expensive because they say it's a thousand copies, but you know, truly, it's a three thousand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that definitely plays a part. But I think the biggest thing for me is just the transparency of it. You know, like I, I want to know whether I'm a collector or a speculator, what I have in my hand. You know, how how rare, or not rare, it is. Um, when you talk about some of these indie publishers, I mean, you get into print runs of a hundred. Yeah, know? So indie, you do micro print runs, which is yeah, a great thing. If if they're not divulging that, you know, um, you go into one of those thinking you're going to be a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, and next thing you know, it's a three thousand print run. I think, I think that's where you put a bad taste in people's mouth in general. And if you're doing variants like that, I don't think it's a good idea to put a bad taste in anyone's mouth. Um, so trying to, to kind of cater to everybody would, would be my thing, but I know you can't do that. Um, I know that some of these people have reasons for doing what they're doing. Um, but yeah, to me, I, I think full transparency is the best. Um, and that's the bottom line. Tony. Yes, you sir. Kind of, you kind of, um, I don't say straddle the fence, but I'd say, I feel like you do collect, but a lot of times just from looking at your Instagram, you're also big into reselling. Where, what are your thoughts on, you know, the whole exclusive end? Do, do you think print runs matter? What do you think about shops saying, Hey, there's only a thousand or so much when we kind of know that there's more. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I mean, I'll be honest. The majority, the vast majority of what I buy right now is based on what value I think it will have. Uh, obviously, I have my own PC. I have books that I, I have books that I will hold on to. But there's a price that for everything, right? Even the prize in your in the prize possession of your collection. If somebody offered you a big enough number, you'd probably take it. So, mm -hmm. um, full transparency. Yeah, I, I buy some uh, retailer variants that look amazing. I am not the biggest fan of retailer variants. I don't go out searching for them. Um, but you know, honestly, before I answer that question, I'd like to ask you a question, Brian, because out of everybody in this panel, you probably have the most experience actually putting out retailer variants. And I think it's something, you know, this printer, this print run side of it, I think that's a part most collectors know 
The only thing they know about it is what the retailers tell them, right? 450 for this one, 1500 for this one. So for, for a Marvel variant, uh, typically I know we end up seeing like the regular trade dress and then maybe a sketch version and then a virgin version. What kind of print runs do people, regardless of what we see from the retailers, what kind of print runs do, do you have to have? How many are they actually making? So, yeah, I was going to go um, kind of bring I, it I, up at the, at the end of this topic, but I'll, I'll go through it right now. So Marvel for trade dress, the minimum, the minimum print run you can have for a trade dress is 3000. You can't do any less than 3000. And then the minimum for, for Virgin is a thousand. Right? Are you forced to do a Virgin with the 3000 trade no. dress or can you just do 3000 trade dress? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I, I don't remember is I think you have to do the trade dress before you can't just do a thousand Virgin. You have to do the, the trade dress and the Virgin. Okay. Um, I, I might be wrong on that if it's changed or how I remember it, but I believe that is so. Um, with Boom, Boom Studios, you you don't have to have a diamond account to do Boom Studios unless that's changed, but you can only do the Virgin variants, and a minimum of that is 500 copies of the Virgin variant. If you have a diamond account, you can do uh, the minimum is 1,000, but you also get your diamond discount, whereas if you don't have the diamond the diamond account and you're just doing 500 virgin it wasn't when we did it i want to say it was like five to six dollars a book and then the artist fee on top of it you know okay. um, boom is good at it where you give them a list of artists and they kind of work with the artist for you where like image comics you, you know however you look at it, image comics you can go out and find your own artist take care of the the artist on your own and then get the, the artwork submitted to image and for image minimum is five hundred dollars per cover so if you're doing two covers you couldn't do like hey i want to do 500 of this and 250 of that you have to do 500 copies of each cover that you're going to do okay that's the minimum and then for dc it's three thousand minimum for trade one thousand minimum for virgin and fifteen hundred i'm being told for the minimal trade dress which is like the cover bees type thing okay so i, I mean and that's fine i also understand when we were doing Virgin variants, we and if you know how Diamond ships, you get a bunch of damaged copies. It, yeah. it's, it's, it, I mean, it was one of the most frustrating things. It's one of the reasons why I was like, I don't want to do with exclusives because it was a pain in the butt. So I can understand retailers saying, hey, we have 3,000 of these. We're only going to sell you know, 2,000, 2,500, whatever it might be, because we know we're going to get 50% damages and it's just a pain in the butt. Um, but I also feel like just be transparent. Hey, this 3000, we're selling a thousand. And then this is what we're doing. You know, 2000 is going to be giveaways or, or leftover for damages copies. But, um, right. And I, I, but I also understand each business. I, this is, that's just my personal opinion. Each business can do what they want to do. That's why, that's why they have a business. But I also want to look after um, comic book buyers who might not know that the, the information and they're going looking at one retailer versus another going, Hey, I was going to buy your book, but you have 3000 of them when they're like putting transparency up front, but I'm buying their book. Cause that's only a thousand of them. And it's the same title. Right. So, so, so a lot of the, and again, just to keep people on the, what we're really addressing the, the issue or the, um, the debate behind some of it are some of these retailers that just are not a, are not releasing the number at all just for whatever reason, whether they think the number 3000 just doesn't sound good and they don't think it'll be harder to market their book that way. Um, or if they're getting a thousand and maybe they want to sell 800 and just hold on to a bunch of them and, you know, give them out, you know, claim that the print run is lower than it, than it possibly is. Or I know some, some retailers have even gotten heat for, legitimate or uh, limiting their print run by by destroying yeah. by actually if they get 500 copies taking 450 of them and destroying them on camera to create a fake artificial you know, scarcity an, yes art, that's thank you for the word that's in my brain and not coming how out. is it let me ask you something because that that artificial scarcity thing always drives me nuts because if there's no more copies around how is it artificial if there's you know what i mean Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and the other thing is, is 
it, oh, you that, could say man-made scarcity. I don't know. Man-made yeah. scarcity. There you go. Okay. What? Well, yeah. Whatever. But the the thing manipulated that manipulated scarcity. Manipulated scarcity. There you go. Um, the problem with that is it's twofold, right? So you have you have the the um, the buyers of of the said exclusive that find out that there was a bunch of b- books that were destroyed, and then they think, oh, those probably weren't destroyed. They're hanging on to them, right? So they think that they're the retailer is screwing them, and then and then it's sad because they do think that, right? So like even if a retailer is being honest and destroying those books, or um, tell me if I'm wrong here. I believe I believe sometimes they'll they'll like they'll like just just like take tear off the covers and give books away for people to read, like no longer being mint. Um, my biggest problem is. I don't care if they do that as long as they're being honest. It goes back to what Andy was saying earlier. You have to let us know the print run. You have to be transparent. If there's no transparency, people are going to be like, he's sitting on books. Uh, he's slowly uh, sending out books. He's got a case of them sitting behind him. You know, because there is no transparency, people are, transparency, people are doing that, right? Um, yeah. and, and let's be honest. Here's the other thing that i'm probably uh you know opening up a can of worms here but that's what we do that's what the show's about yeah the the exclusive game right now is is muddied up by bad homages and um horrible art there's a lot of bad art okay and people uh are getting also getting tired of certain artists like peach momoko I, people got so tired of that stuff because she, every other next next exclusive was a Peach and Mocha book. Peach and Mocha Art book. Germ 2.0. Yeah, Art Germ 2.0. Exactly. <laughs> so there is there's there's so many. It's like all nuance, right? Like this whole thing. To me, one, you need transparency. Two, I'm so tired of the exclusive game homaging every of uh, every cover all the time. Come up with some original stuff. I want to see original stuff. I get it, homages are cool, but nine out of ten times, it's not. Um, so that's, that's one of my big things. And also don't wear out an artist. I don't want to see an artist, uh, put out garbage work because they're overworked. Um, some artists can get away with that, but some artists can't. And th- some of their product is, yeah. is really watered down. Matina just traces. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, shout out, to Art Germ. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Art Germ for recently calling a tracer out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my thing is that, um, if you, if you could be transparent about it and, um, key number one, put out good books and then people, then collectors will just collect them. Screw the, I get it. I'm part of a, I'm a big part of the spec community. I mean, that's, that's what flip side is. It's, it's, it's a spec channel. And, um, but at some point that's th- these exclusives, in my opinion, are getting very close to ruining a big part of the hobby. What about you, Dan? Uh, well, I think, um, yeah, with all this funny business, it risks a, sort of a collapse in pricing, too. And um, and then, and actually, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about a cover A movement, you know, just a bunch of people that are just tired of all of it, and they're only getting cover A's now. It's like a, there's a lot of YouTubers, too, that are talking about that because they're just kind of sick of all of this. And also, when it comes to this really fishy stuff, Man, we just need like one billionaire comic book collector to just sue everybody. You know, it's like if somebody could just sue everyone, CGC include. I mean, everyone just sue everyone. You know, like <laughs> sue is so sue is such a '90s word. You gotta get with the now. It's it's called cancel now. Yeah. No, no. Mm-hmm. I mean, but that's our litigiousness in our culture is actually it's protected a lot of us, protected a lot of consumers, and it's just you need some a rich person that can afford these lawyers to make these cases and unfortunately i think most of us are not rich so they're just like doing whatever they want until unless we also also the fact that basically anybody at this point can make their own exclusive right yeah anybody anybody (laughs) and 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 the other thing is 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 now you get in you start bringing up the ratio variant game like the amount of money that Okay, now you're getting 3,000 copies, which means you're getting every one of those ratio variants for 3,000 copies. And are they doing the exclusives 
to do the exclusive or is that such a big part of it now the ratio variant thing because i i'll be honest man we were talking earlier about the the 3000 and and 4000 uh print run that you need with marvel and dc that's a lot of cheese that is a lot of money to be putting down you know when you're dropping 15 to 20 grand on a exclusive variant and then you've got 3000 copies to sell you've got to figure out ways to sell it so one of the big things that's driving me nuts now is you got exclusive retailers or, or uh, comic retailers who are partnering up with other exclusives who are saying they only have a thousand copies when the front, the person they partnered up with has a thousand copies. And so does the person they partnered up with. They have a thousand copies. So that's another transparency issue, right? Yeah. They just say 3000 yep. share between these stores. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bummer, man. It's, it's a bummer that, but all good things come to an end, right? Yeah. But Oh, Beardo Hefe. Oh man, so you haven't heard your thoughts. There's a there's a couple of ways to think about this a little bit. Now I'll think about this by sharing uh, what I want. While I share this, I want to hear from everybody watching, commenting, comment down below how you guys feel about store variants and how they play with the market and what it does to you and your weekly or monthly collecting and and how you're able to cope or not cope with it because it's it's a real. It's a real challenge, and I want to look at this. I want to share how I am and how I collect a little bit so I can bring some understanding on how I feel about this. I'm like 33% reader, 33% collector, and 33% speculator, like all kind of rounded out. And, and it's thanks to a lot of the OG guys here and the OG guys in the YouTube community and way back in the Google Hangout days and way back before even then that that speculation side of things with CBSI when it first started up that I – speculate heavily to build the value of my collection. I want to buy my books as low as possible so that while I sit on and I, I enjoy them, I know that I'm getting them for the best bargain possible. Therefore, print runs have always been a litmus litmus test for me. Litmus? Wow. Yep. Litmus test for me. You're good. As to you whether not, yeah. <laughs> uh, whether or not like if somebody tells me it's uh, it's X print run and they want $30 for it. That's like, okay, I feel like that's kind of fair. But now that there's no print run numbers for some places and they want $60 for a book, how do I know that I couldn't have gotten that for $30 if somebody told me it was a, a 3000 print run or something like that. Now, thanks to the information that you guys have been sharing that a lot of the community has been sharing with the base minimum numbers, I can still kind of get that litmus test a little bit, but who's to say that on the other side of the coin, that some of these people aren't buying 6,000 copies or creating 6,000 copies, damaging, uh, you know, 25% of them and still ending up whatever, you know what I mean? They're bumping their numbers up even high and then say, well, Hey, people automatically thought I got 3000 because that's what Marvel or DC needs, but I've got six. I'm not saying people are out there doing that, but there is that question out there as well. It's that gray area. So, I'm steering clear of a lot of mainstream variants except for my indie books. My favorite indie stuff from IDW, from Boom, from a lot of other places where I can feel comfortable knowing that what I'm spending, I can kind of gauge whether I'm buying high or I'm kind of buying low. So that's that's where I'm at with that because when – I'll be honest with you. When some of these places said, okay, I'm done announcing my print numbers, I stopped buying books immediately from them. And I've not gone back and I'm not looking at going back. Not interested unless they're sharing print numbers because, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw them under the bus or or, or be rude to them or anything. I'm just gonna choose not to do business with them, and I'm sure there are plenty of other people that feel the same way. Yeah, I I, I agree with that, and um, I also I don't want to play devil's advocate, but I know like one of the retailers that doesn't put print runs out there is Frankie's Comics. Frankie's Comics used to sponsor this channel and, and donate books to the Patreon box. Um, I, I also think some of the what he did, uh, I can tell you from what from me knowing Kevin at Frankie's, nothing he does is nefarious in, in intent. It's not to manipulate market or anything like that. He will get books, and if they don't sell, and then they rise in, in, in value later, he doesn't sell them for more. He'll sell them either as a giveaway or at a convention for the same price that he did it. And I think part of the reason why he stopped doing print runs is his books, some of his books, he got on that run where a lot of his books were selling out instantly and people were complaining. You got the other side of the coin where they complaining like, hey, everyone should be able to get one, right? And he's kind of stuck in that rock and hard place where at, at, at one point he just said fine and ordered more. Now, 
Do I feel like, hey, maybe you should put the print run in there? Yes. But at the same time, we all know you're never going to please everyone. So it's kind of like pick your line in the sand. And I respect them for doing that. Whether I agree or disagree, all these businesses, I respect them for the decisions they make. This this show is for us to share our opinions on the matter. I don't agree with, hey, it's only a thousand to print run. That's how you want to do it. That is fine. That's that's why people have businesses. I just wanted to let viewers that watch this channel, watch y'all's channel, let them know, hey, this is the minimum print runs that you can, that you have to do. And you guys make your choice whether you want to buy or not buy. Um, I think it also hurts some retailers like we talked about before where they've gone out and said, I was going to buy yours, but this one, there's this limit to a thousand, yours is 3000. So I went with them. So yeah, I got a spicy 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 topic to bring up that kind of goes along with this and um peel back the curtain a little bit uh, most guys here know this already um you know they either they're part of the chat or they they've heard it from us but we had a little little uh um what do you call it a mix up or a shape up in the flip side crew last couple months where you know we wanted to do a show on exclusive variants right and as soon as you do that as a spec channel people start going, oh, you can't talk about exclusive because now you start bringing in the famous pump and dump, right? Oh, yeah. So so at what point, and, and this, this is my question, at what point is it okay to talk about these exclusives if you're a spec, if a spec channel? Is it is it wrong um, for a spec Whenever channel? Whenever you damn well feel like it. Yes, yeah. yeah. I yes, mean, it's I agree. your channel. If that, there's always going to be that conversation there. I mean, and I, I know you're, you're kind of – I know I'm not saying anything that you don't know or don't understand that you're kind of getting the, the viewer's opinions, Brian. But, mm -hmm. I mean, that pump and dump's been there forever. People always say it. it it's just there's always going to be those people that feel that way about it. But then there's also the other side of the audience that, hey, we've seen people in the chat say, I buy what I buy the covers I like. I buy the art I like. I I like exclusive vans, and I take pride in the Patreon box that I put out is full of exclusive vans. And – I, it wasn't necessarily directed at me, at least I don't think so in the chat, where Mystery Box is full of unsellable exclusives because I could show the track record of the books that go in my boxes for Patreon yeah. are selling for two, three hundred dollars on eBay. So right. there, there's there's good and bad in all of it. And it's not just variants. It's in comics in general. But I mean, to answer your question, Brian, talk about it when you want to talk about it. Right. And, yep. you know, I'm going to steal one of your lines, Brian, because you, we talked about a lot of the negatives and the drama and the, the, the issues behind it. But that being said, uh, <laughs> I, I may not buy a lot of retailer variants, but I actually I am a complete fan of them. I think they should exist. Most of them are put up by by comic stores. Don't we want them to survive yes. to have another source of income? And whether these artists online or whether it's a, you know, a brick and mortar, they give more work to artists. They're kind of like the, the, the minor leagues for art. Yeah. A lot of times it's, a, it's the comic book art farm team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And not every minor league game is very good. They're not, but people pay, people pay for the tickets. And every once in a while you get that superstar, that, that, that cover that showed up on a retailer variant that people don't even mention that it's a retailer variant anymore. They just chase it. Well, if you look at most of the uh, artists that have just been on fire the last couple of months, right? Most of them got their start in exclusives. Peach, uh, Rose Besh, didn't Rose Cal Besh do an exclusive? Yeah, um, uh, yeah John Gallagher. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're, 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 it's, and, and you know what's funny? You said the minor leagues of it. I'm totally cool with that. As a matter of fact, if that's all it is, I think that exclu the exclusive game is a positive. If we can find more, because that's exactly what's happening with a lot of this stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's watered down by a lot of, you know, big names. And not, I shouldn't say watered down. It's it's a, it's a full room with a lot of big names. Saturated. Saturated, yeah. But there are a lot of up and comers that we would have never heard about if if there wasn't an exclusive to get them on. Um, that's a good point. Yeah, it's kind of like a different case. mediums. Yeah. yeah, it's like a Kickstarter. Support what you like, you know. Yeah. Same, same premise. And if Amen. there are sellers that are pulling shady stuff, karma, man. You know, it'll come back. You'll they'll have a backlog. They'll not, you know, they'll get out of the game. The, yeah. the cream should rise to the top. 
there's all there's two um, things that will always happen in comics. Spec will always be cyclical. You know, your dead spec box will always People have some worth bitch. in it, right? And and, and and comic karma is real, very real. Yeah. yeah. And, but, and anybody who specs understands that. I mean, fifteen hundred print run, three thousand print run. I mean, we talk about books that have a almost a million print run where the the book has value. In the long run, these are. These are not important numbers, really.